right. Cut the skin out, precept you like a knife. You wanna die in these streets, I was blind, now I see. The physicians of righteousness. Hey, doc, I'm trying to get my life right. Cut the skin out, precept you like a knife. You wanna die in these streets, I was blind, now I see. The physicians of righteousness. 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 Nah? All right, cool. All right, let's talk about this. All right, you brought this on yourself. All right, we're going to talk about this. You ready? We're going to talk about William Tyndale. Y'all ready? Give me my books. Uh, start with KJB first. Uh, just to highlight a part for King James? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says, uh, the proposal pleased the king. So he's talking about they asked him to translate the Bible, right? Go ahead. Who violently disliked the Genevan Bible. He hated the Genevan Bible. Go ahead. And a resolution was passed to produce a new translation of the Bible mm -hmm. from the original Hebrew and Greek. What did he use? From the original Hebrew and Greek. So KJV used the original Hebrew and Greek. Go back now to William Tyndale. It says, Tyndale's English New Testament. It was not a translation from the Latin. He didn't use the Latin Vulgate. As Wycliffe had been, uh -huh. but was rendered from the original Greek. What did Tyndale use? What was rendered from the original Greek. What did King James use? What did he use? We just read it. The Greek and the Hebrew. He used the original Greek though, right? For the New Testament, he used the original Greek. As did Tyndale, right? Read that thing again. Tyndale's English New Testament began a new epoch in the history of the English Bible. Mm -hmm. It was not a translation from the Latin as Wycliffe had been, mm -hmm. but was rendered from the original Greek. Mm -hmm. The text published by Erasmus. With each successive edition, Tyndale made corrections and improvements. So well did Tyndale do his work that the KJV... The what? That the KJV... Okay, now we're talking about the KJV, which also used the Greek. Go ahead. Reproduces about 90%. It reproduced what? About 90%. Why would they reproduce 90% of the KJV in the Wyndham Tyndale? Or the William Tyndale in the KJV? Why would they reproduce 90%? Why? Huh? You have to uh, change the wording? No, I'm saying, why? but why would it be so close to 90%? Why would it be that way? When it say that 90%, read that part again. So well did Tyndale do his work. That he the, did his work really well. That the KJV reproduces about 90%. So when it say reproduces 90%, is it saying that it reproduced what William Tyndale wrote? What are they saying? It's from the... 90% of the Greek and Hebrew. Exactly. Yeah. So it was 90% the same. Why would it be the same? Because they had the same source data. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So just because William Tyndale had 90% accuracy of what was in the KJV, if they're using the same source data, then you're going to come out with the same answers. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Yes. Okay. Go, go back to uh, KJV. Why was it 90%? We'll see. And again, I'm not a scholar on this stuff. I'm not saying I know anything. I'm just reading the words. I'm going to read the Bible more than anything. Go ahead. It says, The proposal pleased the king, who violently disliked the Genevan Bible. And, as a resol and a resolution was passed to produce a new translation of the Bible from the original Hebrew and Greek without any marginal notes mm -hmm. for the use of all the churches in England. Mm -hmm. Without delay, King James nominated 54 of the best Hebrew and Greek scholars of the day. So, Tyndale did it by himself. King James had scholars come do it, right? Not knocking Tyndale, right? He used Martin Luther and the people around him, right? Go ahead. Only 47 actually took part in the work, which did not begin until 1607. They were divided into six groups, three for the Old Testament, two for the New, 
and one for the Apocryphal. Two of the groups met at Oxford, two at Cambridge, and two at Westminster. Elaborate rules were laid down for their guidance. When a group had completed its task, its work was submitted to 12 men. I want the last part that I highlighted. You should say like italics. Italics were used for words not found in the original, but necessary to complete the sentence. So, 90%. It's a 90%. What did they say they did at the end right there? Read that again. Italics were used. They used italics. For words not found in the original, but necessary to complete the sentence. Now, let's go to the Bible. Give me... Let's start here. Deuteronomy chapter 17. Let's start at verse 18. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 18. Uh huh. And it shall be when he sitteth upon. He's talking about the king. Read that part again. He's talking about when the king is set up king over Israel. Right? Read that again. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom uh -huh. that he shall write him a. What he's supposed to do? Write him a copy of this law. What was the king supposed to do? Yeah. Write the law. That's what the kings were supposed to do. It wasn't like that was something new that KJV decided to do. It's not like something new that any of these brothers decided to do. We always wrote the Bible. Give me that. Google uh, printing press. When was the printing press created? Nope. Read that, Jim says the printing press spread within several decades to over 200 cities in a dozen European countries. Uh -huh. By 1500, printing presses in operation throughout Western Europe had already produced more than 20 million volumes. Mm. In the 16th century, with presses spreading further afield, their output rose tenfold to an estimated 150 to 200 million copies. That's enough. All right, so <clears throat> around the 1500s, they started coming out with printing presses. So up until that point, what was we doing? We was handwriting the Bible. We was handwriting it out. Go back to Deuteronomy 17 again. So it's not like William Tyndale came up with something or KJV came up with something or any of these brothers. Everybody was doing it. Deuteronomy chapter 17 and verse 18. Uh-huh. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom uh -huh. that he shall write him a copy of this law mm -hmm. and a book out of that which is before the priests, the Levites. Mm -hmm. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, mm -hmm. that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them. So, we always wrote the Bible, right? Going back to 18, it says, And it shall be... When he Deuteronomy, sitteth, we in Deuteronomy still. Yeah, still Deuteronomy. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which was before the priests, the Levites. So what was before the priests, the Levites? What did they have? The original text that Moses had. They had the original text. You didn't know say so, so they he, wasn't just going by memory. They was just going by it. They was looking at this yep. and writing it down here. That's, that's the same thing that King James did. The same thing William Tyndale did. Just because it's older don't mean that it's the one we should use. You know what I'm saying? Watch this. Go to uh, Jeremiah 45. Jeremiah chapter 45 and verse 1. Uh -huh. <clears throat> the word that Jeremiah the prophet spake unto Baruch the son of Neriah, when he had written these words in a book at the mouth of Jeremiah. So you got to understand, even with all the stuff that's in the Bible, somebody had to sit down and write it out. You know what I'm saying? Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah didn't just poof appear. You know what I'm saying? He wrote it. That's what we always did. Go to that. Go to uh, Jeremiah. Stay in Jeremiah 51 and 60. I like that one a little bit. Jeremiah 51 and 60. Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse 60. Mm -hmm. So Jeremiah wrote in a book all the evil that should come upon Babylon. That's what we was doing. He was writing down all the stuff that was happening. He was writing out the prophecies. That's what Jeremiah was doing. It wasn't like a new thing. You know what I'm saying? Go to uh, where else I'm going. Give me 2 Maccabees. 2 Maccabees chapter 2 verse 11. Watch this. 2 Maccabees chapter 2 and verse 11. It's a scripture. I'm going to find it, man. It's one that tells you that, like, one of them Greek kings made them write out the Bible, too. In Greek. 
The word Septuagint means 70. You know what I'm saying? So when it say the Greek Septuagint, it's saying like they took 70 books and wrote them in Greek. That's all it's saying. Go to 2 Maccabees 2. Where I'm starting at. Verse 11. Yeah. Second Maccabees chapter 2 and verse 11 mm -hmm. And Moses said Because the sin offering was not to be eaten It was consumed uh -huh. So Solomon kept those 8 days So Solomon kept 8 days right Just like the feast of a uh, dedication Solomon kept that too Go ahead. The same things also were reported in the writings What was they? Were reported in the writings So they wrote down what was happening just because it's old, it's older than the KJV don't mean it's better or it was around. No, no, the brothers was always writing what happened. Go ahead. And commentaries of Nehemiah. Who wrote it to? And commentaries of Nehemiah. Nehemiah was sitting down writing the stuff. Go ahead. And how he founding a library. What did he do? He gathered up all the books together. Nehemiah gathered all the books together. It's not a new thing that Tyndale or KJV did. We always did that. Watch. Gathered together the acts of the kings mm. and the prophets mm. and of David mm. and the epistles of the kings concerning the holy gifts. So Nehemiah did that thing too. He put together a Bible. He put together the books. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. In like manner also. And what? Who? In like manner. Judas gathered. Judas did it too. The Maccabees they put that thing together too. It's not like. KJV was the first person to do it. But what's different about the KJV? Why do we use the KJV? Why do we say this is the one we got to use? We'll get to it. Uh, jump over. Keep going. Judas gathered together all those things that were lost mm -hmm. by reason of the war we had, mm -hmm. and they remained with us. He said, look, we got the writings. This guy... Whoever this person is, because he don't name who he is, right? He said, we still got the writings that Judas and them had, that Nehemiah and them had. I still got them. Go ahead. Wherefore, if ye, if ye have need thereof, send some to fetch them unto you. He said, hey, if y'all want to see the books, we got the books. Come down, check them out. Send somebody over here. We'll send you a couple of copies back. Go ahead. Whereas... We then are about to celebrate the purification we have written unto you, and ye shall do well if ye keep the same days. I got to 17 for some reason. Keep going. We hope also that the God that delivered all his people and gave them all an heritage and the kingdom and the priesthood and the sanctuary. So this guy, whoever this is that wrote the book of Second Maccabees, go ahead. Being declared by Jason of Cyrene. In five books. What did he? So how was the book of Second Maccabees written? What did he do? Read that again. All these things I say, being declared by Jason of Cyrene. Is some book out there called Jason of Cyrene that had what? In five books. It was five books. This guy that wrote out Second Maccabees, he wrote it from reading five books. So it's other books out there somewhere. Does it matter? No, not really. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. We will assay to a bridge in one volume. What was he doing? He said, I'm going to take the information that we got. I'm going to put it together for you and make it compact. Just like we got the KJV today. They was doing it back here. It wasn't a new thing that KJV did. It wasn't like something, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just going to do my own thing. No, we always did that. We read about Nehemiah, Solomon, Judah, all the kings before. They always did this thing. Ezra. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. For considering the infinite number and the difficulty which they find that desire to look into the narrations of the story mm. for the variety of the matter. Read that thing again. For considering the infinite number. And he's saying the infinite number. It's an innumerable number of books and stuff he can read that will take him down a path of nowhereness. You know what I'm saying? It's an infinite number of stuff and information you can gather for the Bible. But it's not always necessary. It's not always profitable. You know what I'm saying? Just because somebody wrote it on a piece of paper and it's old, don't mean I should make that the thing that I'm saying is the thing. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. And the difficulty 
which they find that desire to look into the narrations of the story mm. for the variety of the matter. He said it's difficult to take all that information and compact it for you. You know what I'm saying? Watch. Go ahead. We have been careful mm. that they that will read might have delight. So what did he have? Did he do it by himself? This guy that put the Maccabees, the second book of Maccabees together, do it by by himself? No, obviously not. He said we. Read it again. We have been careful. We've been careful. We took our time. We did real research to put the book of Second Maccabees together for you. We didn't just say oh, I like. It. You know what I'm saying? They they did research with Jason and Cyrene. They had the works of Nehemiah and all this stuff. Solomon, Judas. They had all this information. And they put this stuff together. Go ahead. That they that will read might have delight. Mm. And that they that are desirous to commit to memory might have ease. Mm. And that all into whose hands it comes might have profit. He said everybody that read the book of Second Maccabees that I put together for y'all, we hoping that it'll profit you. That's why he put it together. He didn't put it together for vain glory to be seen. A man, he put it together so it could profit you. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Therefore, to us that have taken upon us this painful labor of abridging. Painful was... labor of abridging. What is he saying? He's saying, I'm taking all the information. I'm gathering it up and I'm filling in the, the blanks for you. Like we just read that King James them did when they put in the italics. It's the same thing. He said, we are abridging. We taking the information that we got and we giving a sense around it to help you out. That's what he's saying. Read on. It was not easy. Mm. But a matter of sweat and watching, mm. Mm. even as it is no ease unto him that prepared the banquet, and seeketh the benefit of others, yet for the pleasuring of many we will undertake gladly this great pains, mm. Mm -mm. Okay. leaving to the author the exact handling of every particular, and laboring to follow the rules of an abridgment. He said. So he said the author, the person that's writing this, he said we know all the particulars. But we giving you the narration of it, you know what I'm saying, to help you, to just basic, to give you the, the understanding that you can have hope. I can't write everything down because it's infinite. He said there's infinite books out there. I can't write everything. Keep going. For as the master builder of a new house must care for the whole building, mm. but he that undertake if to set it out and paint it must seek out fit things for the adorning thereof mm. even so i think it is with us he said i i can't focus on the whole gigantic picture i just got to focus in on what i can focus in on my part is just the maccabees Go ahead, uh, yeah back in uh verse where, where at, man? verse 28 it says in laboring to follow the rules of an abridgment mm. so they had rules on how they were supposed to just to like we things. read in kjv when he put together his 47 scholars and they put a panel together it was specific rules to it exactly go ahead i'm sorry no you're cool you're good that's that's the point oh okay that's the point there's rules to the thing it wasn't like oh you know what this looks nice i'm gonna throw this information in there <laughs> no there was rules you're not gonna let the book enoch just slide in there you know what i'm saying like they were mindful about what information was in there because they didn't just allow any random crap in there anybody's <laughs> personal interpretation no it's hey this is how it needs to be done mm. you're not going to put what you think and feel about it in there you're not going to put any twist in there right right like the author said in the same thing with the king J kjv he had learned men do these things not just random negroes off the street keep going I'm not saying that william tyndale was a random negro that's not what i'm saying <laughs> yeah. that's not what i'm saying but it's, yeah. it was a certain way that KJV applied the rules to his abridgment. Why we choose to use this one instead of that one. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't that just because we like the way that this one smell. You know what I'm saying? It was the way that the thing was put together. We say, okay, this is the one that we should rest on. You don't like the fancy letters? Uh, the fancy, the vowels. And the, the vowels you know what I'm saying? Indeed. Nah, it ain't that. Go ahead. Verse 29. Whereas the master builder of a new house must care for the we whole... Thirty. Verse 30. Uh -huh. To take, to stand upon every point mm. and go over things at large. He said, we got to go over things at large. I can't talk about all the particulars. Go ahead. And to be curious in particulars, uh -huh. belonging to the first author of the story. He said, the, the particulars, that belongs to me. I'm the author. That's me. I got to worry about that. But the abridgment, that's what I'm giving y'all. Go ahead. But to use brevity and avoid much laboring of the work. Mm -hmm is to be granted to him that will make an abridgment. Mm. 
Here then will we begin the story. So there you go. Here then will I begin. Go ahead, finish that. Only adding thus much to that which has been said, that it is a foolish thing to make a long prologue and to be short in the story itself. So I'm saying all that to say, like, that's not a new thing. Us sitting down, putting together the Bible. Dudes did it in Maccabees. Dudes did it in Ezra. They were Nehemiah, Judah. All of them was doing it. You know what I'm saying? Jump to the last chapter of 2 Maccabees. Let's start at verse 37. Can I just add one more point? Go ahead. This, this thing is crazy because we went to that rules of abridgment thing, like how you say you added particulars. Yes. You know, it's, uh, you got to think, who gave the rules of abridgment? You know what I'm saying? Our kings were, were writing these things down for a long time, so that's just a thought that comes in my mind. You know? Yeah, I don't know. I can't, I can't answer that, but I'm sure they had some type of rules. They knew how to do it, you know what I'm saying? And it was obviously a group of people that sat down and did it. It wasn't just one dude. 15 and 37. 2 Maccabees chapter 15 and verse 37. Mm -hmm. Thus went it with Nicanor, and from that time forth the Hebrews had the city and their power. Mm -hmm. And here will I make an end. So again, the author who put together the book of 2 Maccabees is making reference to, I'm done with my story. Right? Go ahead. Watch what he say. And if I have done well, and as is fitting the story... It is that which I desire. Mm. But if slenderly and meanly, it is that which I could attain unto. He, he said, I did my best. You know what I'm saying? The guy that put together the second book of Maccabees said, I did my best. He said, if you see it as garbage, as rubbish, you know what I'm saying? That's when he says slenderly and meaningly. He's like, look, I did my best. I did the best I could do with the limited amount of information and information that I had. I did my best. All right? Go ahead. For as it is hurtful to drink wine or water alone, mm -hmm. and as wine mingled with water is pleasant mm. and delighteth the taste, even so speech finally framed. Even so what? Even so speech finally framed. That's what KJV did, right? Again, going back to the italics, they framed the words to help give the sense. That's the difference between the Tyndale and the KJV. He framed the words. Read it again. Even even so speech finally framed Delighteth the heirs of them that read the story mm. And here shall be an end Alright, jump Alright, jump to uh, Sirach chapter 10 Verse 1 This is always a thing I'm saying that this is the direction you was going But this, when this type of stuff comes to my ears This is what I, this is what I think And it It, it, it it raises a red flag for me. Why? Watch this. 10 and 7? 10 and 1. Mm -hmm. Sirach chapter 10 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. A wise judge will instruct his people. Mm. And the government of a prudent man is well ordered. So we got to be well ordered, right? That means we supposed to be walking in lockstep in unison. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. As the judge of the people is himself. So are his officers. So we got to be in agreement with it first, right? My soldiers, my officers, we got to be in agreement. You dig what I'm saying? Go ahead. And what manner of men the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. So even the brothers that dwell around us, we got to all walk in that same unison. If we're not all walking in that same unison, we're not well ordered. You dig what I'm saying? Keep going. An unwise king destroyed his people. But see, what happens is, right, if... I was unwise, or if we was unwise, we wouldn't be able to help give any clarity on these things. You think know what I'm saying? We'll destroy our people because we can't say why we teach the King James, why we say we read the Apocrypha. If we can't identify these things, then we, we're going to destroy you all. You think know what I'm saying? Go ahead. But through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. So, the prudence of those that are in authority. I see things like that as a direct shot at the bishops. You know what I'm saying? At the deacons, at the captains. Because they are the ones that's in authority. They the ones that said, we got to go this direction. You know what I'm saying? I always read the Bible before the truth. You know what I'm saying? I never doubted it. I didn't know how to prove it. You know what I'm saying? That's something I learned now, you know what I'm saying, like how to really prove the historical accuracy, the prophetic accuracy, the, the, the things and how they help your life. 
it took time to establish that. But those men have been around way before me. So at some point, I had to take a leap of faith and say, okay, I'm going a, I'm to a trust this. You know what I'm saying? This part right here, this one right here, the Apocrypha, whoo, that was hard for me, bro. I would not read that thing. Even when I first came to the truth, I would not read it. I had it. I was like, nah, I'm going to stay out of that. I don't trust that red book. I don't know about that one. So it took me a while to really understand how to prove it, you know what I'm saying, and be patient enough to, to let the brothers that's walked before me to show me that it's accurate. You know what I'm saying? And it takes some 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 true humility, you know what I'm saying? Okay. First Corinthians 1. 10. You get excited? Yes, sir. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10. Uh -huh. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, mm -hmm. but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind. And in the same judgment. We got to all be joined together, right? So if we saying we got to read the KJV and this is the one that we got to call our rallying point, then we got to all be there. You know what I'm saying? And if not, then you got to go somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? If you don't agree with that, you got to say, you know what? I don't agree with that. You know what I'm saying? I got to I gotta make a move. You know what I'm saying? I've seen online, I'm telling you the truth, I've seen online where brothers have like, some of the Hebrew, some of the Old Testament, and then they like uh, uh, scissor out the writings of Paul and then put in the book of Enoch. You know what I'm saying? I see, bro, and it's like all taped up on the side, like they taped the whole thing together. The Bible that they like. You know what I'm saying? Crazy. I see it, bro, where brothers do that type of stuff. So when we saying we got to all be perfectly joined together, we saying, as far as the scripture wise, we got to all walk in unison on that thing. We can't say this thing is better than this thing or this thing came from this thing. We can't. We got to all speak the same things. Go to Acts chapter 20, verse 26. Acts chapter 20 and verse 26. Uh -huh. Wherefore, I take you co-record this day. Mm. That I am pure from the blood of all men. So when Paul say he is pure from the blood of of all men, why is he saying that? Go ahead. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Because Paul was saying he was pure from the blood of men because he didn't hide nothing that was in the scriptures. He didn't say, I'm going to go this way, I'm going to go that way. He, he kept it. Whatever the leadership had taught to him, that's where he was going. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God. Which he hath purchased with his own blood. So when he say to feed the flock of God, it's our job to give them the proper information. It's important that we give them the proper information. Not just the stuff we like or we feel. We got to really prove why we saying that this thing is the thing. You know what I'm saying? Why we say that the KJV, we use the park for. Why we say we use the park. We got to be able to prove it. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves... Enter in among you, not sparing the flock. So what what could happen, and I always, you know, say this, man. Brothers, it's not just about coming in wearing your fringes or keeping a Sabbath day. The grievous wolves can go into different teaching. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to teach this other thing that ain't nobody else saying. That's a grievous wolf. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. Also of your own selves. Also of your own selves. Amongst us, brothers in purple, brothers can rise up and teach things that's in opposition of what we teach. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Shall men arise, mm. speaking perverse things, mm -hmm. to draw away disciples after them. So you can't do that. We can't do that. We can't be in that position where we want to draw away disciples after this thing because we think we got something better than everybody else. We can't do that. You know what I'm saying? We got to all walk in unison and lockstep in what we believe. And this thing, this formula has worked. You know what I'm saying? Look where we at. I mean, this is, I mean, I'm telling you, I said all the time, I was in front of Plaza Bonita Mall by my damn self. You know what I'm saying? Nobody was with me. I was out there in the purple shirt. You know what I'm saying? And now we here. You know what I'm saying? So if we see the formula is working, obviously, it must be okay. You know what I'm saying? Let's stick to the formula. Uh, give me my last one. I got two. Go to Jeremiah 6 and 16. <laughs> you know what I was thinking that? Yeah. I didn't even write it down, but. You just said it. 
I was like, ah, let's do it. Jeremiah 6 and 16. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. It's like my favorite scripture. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see, mm. and ask for the old path. Which path are you supposed to ask for? Ask for the old path. Ask for the path that works out. Don't try to come up with your own path. Keep going. Where is the good way? Where is the good way? Where, is the, where can I go that I can make sure that I'm going to be setting myself up for success? You know what I'm saying? That's what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be walking in the old path. Go ahead. And walk therein. Mm -hmm. And you shall find rest for your souls. You'll find rest for your souls. If you just say, you know what? Let me just follow the brothers that was put here before me and put your faith there. Things will work out a lot better. Always. Right? Last one. Sirach 427. <laughs> I didn't expect that to take that long. Sirach chapter 4, verse 27. Uh -huh. Make not thyself an underling to a foolish man. So you always want to ask yourself, okay, are the men that I'm following, are they foolish? If you feel like I'm foolish or uh, the captains are foolish or Bishop Nathaniel or Bishop Kanai is foolish, shouldn't be a part of that group. You know what I'm saying? You shouldn't. If you say, hey, I think I know more than that guy, you shouldn't be there. Make sense? Go ahead. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so, why would we, why would we even um, try to bring something else into the body? Because like, like the scriptures say, that's, that's opened up a door to we bringing in new doctrines. Hey, you know what? Just check out what I found. Right. I found this in this Bible or in this word over here. The book of Enoch says, you know, the thing is, we got to watch our pride because like the scriptures say, we got we to gotta follow the old path. We got to, and the old path is, is our leadership. Those are the people that we should be following. Not saying that we, if they say, okay, well, now we're going to drink this punch, you got to use wisdom. But these brothers, these... Elders know where they're going. So we gotta watch our pride. Let's go to Proverbs real quick. Uh six sixteen through nineteen. Can I get Amorati? Because there's some things out there that the Lord just can't take. And pride being one of them. Got it? Proverbs chapter six and verse sixteen. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift and running to mischief. Verse 19. A false witness that speaketh lies, and him that sowed discord among brethren. So sow discord amongst brethren. That's separating us when we start bringing in other things. It's like we need to just stay, stay on the old path. Follow those who went before us. Bishop, they've been reading out of King James from day one. We're not jumping from Bible to Bible. They was reading the Hebrew initially, they said. They would read the Hebrew and the Greek. I mean, and the English. They said they would read both of them together. Oh, okay. And they came in. And they said they couldn't understand they it. They couldn't understand it, yeah. But they would read both of them. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, so I'm sure this is not like a new thing where they're going to be like, oh, I'm going to bedazzle you with the tender. I'm sure they done heard of it. You know what I'm saying? He said he saw a class on it. I never seen it, but Yasadi said he saw something. You did? All right, cool. Uh, I just wanted to reemphasize the point that Officer and I made. It says, in a heart that devises wicked imaginations. Because that actually kind of goes into two scriptures. Because to devise a wicked imagination is to bring up something, uh, as Officer Zabi read in uh, the Corinthians, to draw men after you. That's a wicked imagination. I don't want to bring this up. I'm going to look, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to bring out this new thing. I'm going to look good, look wise. So you can take men after you. Hey, follow me. I got wisdom. Hear me. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a wicked imagination. Um, at the end of the, go go to Acts five. Acts five. Yep. Start with verse thirty eight. Verse thirty eight. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them alone. 
For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. Let's happily ye be found even to fight against God. So the leadership, we've been reading the same scriptures for years. If this was of man and not of God, guess what? IUIC wouldn't be where it's at. And you wouldn't see it continue to grow. But the Most High was not dealing with it. So if there was something off, the Most High would hinder it. So you're not going up against man, you're going up against the Most High at the end of the day. So you got to really think about that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All praises. All right, I jump off that train. I jump off. But they both used the Greek, which is why it was 90% <clears throat> the same. What KJV and his scholars did, they put the italics around to get the six. All right? Yes, sir. Huh? Everything you was reading is on, on page six and seven. Oh, okay. And that's why I was like, I was asking about it, because it was in his body. Uh -huh. And they explained everything that he read is on page six through page seven through eight. Okay. So that's why I was like, you know, it's basically the same thing. But, but uh, when he, like you were saying, King James changed, he put the, uh, he, he, the he framed uh, the words. Yes. Okay. He took black man out of the new put Okay. Um, so I guess the point was, is that they both use the Greek text, which is why those things would be close to the same. It doesn't mean that they use Tyndale in order to translate the Bible. That's not what happened. They they had the same text, and therefore the situation or the, the equation came out the same. You know what I'm saying? What, um, what was I trying to say? You got a difference between source data and resource data. You know what I'm saying? So not to even say that that wasn't a resource, that could have been a resource. I don't know, I wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the source data, which they emphasized, was the Greek and the Hebrew. That was the source data, different from resource. You know what I'm saying? All right. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org